Hey guys, today I'm presenting a detailed review of a specialized piece of networking equipment which I talk a lot about on this channel. It's a PoE switch. Now PoE stands for Power Over Ethernet and you can use this switch to supply electricity to network devices over the same network cable that you use to transfer data to and from the device. Now this PUE I managed switch is from Grandly and it costs about $45 US on Amazon.com. The links are in the description below. As you may know, a standard non-PoE switch is basically a network splitter. It allows you to take a network cable and split it into multiple connections. Your connected router or modem will assign IP addresses to each device plugged into the switch. But what about a PoE switch? A PoE switch takes this a step farther by letting you use the unused cables within your network data cable to supply electricity to the device. Devices. This convenience allows you to eliminate power adapters and PoE injectors and splitters. There's no need to worry about power outlets near your devices, like where you're going to plug in your security camera. So let's check out what's in the box. Okay, so first off we have a user manual, give it a read. A standard IEC power cord. Little pads for the bottom of the switch. Some mounts for rack mounting the switch. The screws are included. And here we have the switch itself. Now Yangli sells many configurations. This one is a four port PoE switch with an uplink port and an SFP port. So right off the bat, the first thing I noticed, which I'm really excited about, is no clunky power adapter. It's all built into the PoE switch. Now looking at the sides, there doesn't appear to be any cooling fans, so no additional humming sounds in my work area. On the sides, you can also notice that there are screw holes for rack mounting this switch. I wonder if this unit does get hot inside. So here's a thermal image before and after running the switch for 10 hours, supplying electricity to four 4K cameras. Let's take the cover off and do the exact same test. Here it is without any load, and here's the thermal image with load for 10 hours supplying electricity to cameras. On the bottom there are little indentations for rubber feet. Let's get those sticky pads put on. On the back of the device here we have a power port and a grounding screw. It accepts an ICE power cord which is the same fit of a PC or NVR power cord. The three prong power cord is grounded. I open up the device to make sure. You can see the middle pin is grounded to two screws which are connected to the case. Use the external earth screw for grounding the device if it isn't connected to a power outlet and there are devices connected to the front ports. On the front we have 4 gigabit ports. If you need more, Yanli sells PoE switches in various configurations up to 16 ports. Gigabit ports are more than enough bandwidth to support 4K cameras or higher. Simply plug in your non-PoE or PoE active devices into the ports and your switch will automatically identify if they accept power over Ethernet or not. The ports comply with IEEE 802.3 AFAT PoE power supply standards and support up to 30 watts per port, which means it's PoE+. Plus. These devices would include IP cameras, VoIP phones, and wireless access points. On the other hand, make sure not to plug any PoE passive devices into the switch because they could damage the device. The total usable PoE power budget across all four ports is 78 watts. The average dome or bullet camera uses about 7 watts. Next we have this port labeled Uplink and it's an RJ45 connection. This is where you would connect your switch to your network modem, router, network video recorder or the next branch of hardware on your network which would be sending or receiving data through all of the ports on the switch. This port also supports 1 gigabit per second transfers. Obviously it is not PoE enabled. Next to the Uplink port we have this odd looking one. It's labeled SFP. It's also an uplink port used to connect the switch to your network using fiber optics. It's often used to connect multiple large switches together and I like having this option on a smaller switch though I probably wouldn't use it here at home. It would come in handy if I was using it at a large facility like a warehouse. Having those lightning fast connections in such a large building would be a huge advantage. Next, let's talk about this little button here on the side. It's labeled V and S. S is for standard mode, where we have gigabit speeds on all ports. They can communicate with each other, and the maximum cable length you could use per port is 100 meters, or 328 feet on a standard CAT6 network cable. V, on the other hand, is for VLAN or extended mode. When active, devices plugged into the four ports cannot communicate or see each other. 
Let's look at a very quick example. Here I have my router, which is responsible for assigning IP addresses to connected devices. It's plugged into the PoE switch below using the uplink port. The switch has my PC and a PoE camera attached. In standard mode, the PC is able to see the uh, camera when I ping it. Now, when I go ahead and activate the extended mode and I ping the camera again, I'm no longer able to see the camera on my network. Plugging my PC directly into the router, however, allows me to see the IP camera again because VLAN mode simply prevents the four main ports on the PoE switch from communicating with each other. But any hardware plugged into the uplink ports will allow you to see the attached devices. Using VLANs is great in an untrusted environment where you have your own computer on a public network such as a library or a hotel for example. Or you could have multiple access points plugged into the different ports on the front and you don't want them to cross communicate such as users on your guest network talking to your regular home or business network. So here's how I'm going to be setting up my PoE switch. The camera and the access point are connected to the switch, which are connected to the router and modem and have access to the internet. VLAN mode on some of you and these other switches have a power boost setting, allowing you to power a PoE device up to 250 meters or 820 feet away. This switch unfortunately does not have that feature, but let's do some distance testing and see what the switch can do. All right, so I just spent the past five hours testing various lengths of cable and the results are pretty impressive. Now, normally the maximum length of a network cable is 100 meters or 328 feet. I'm using CAT6 UTP cable with a gauge of 23 and it's marked as 550 megahertz. It's a high quality cable. I'll put a link in the description below. First off, let's talk about basic connectivity through my network. My Surface will be pinging another computer and uploading and downloading files all through my router and switch. Here are the various lengths of cables that I've used in this test. I tested them both in standard and VLAN modes and the results were the same as expected. At 10 meters or 33 feet, I'm able to ping this computer on the network at less than one millisecond. I obtained an upload speed of almost 400 and a download speed of almost 550. Not too bad. At 50 meters or 164 feet, very similar results. Same with 100 meters or 228 feet. At 150 meters or 492 feet, I still had a very strong connection, even though I'm way beyond the maximum recommended length. To my surprise, 175 meters or 574 feet also did very well. So I decided to keep going and at 200 meters or 656 feet, it did pretty good, but the speeds are obviously starting to decrease. At 229 meters or 750 feet, we're down within 10 Mbps. I tried several more lengths, all the way up to 305 meters or 1,000 feet, and I was still able to make a connection and transfer data. Quite surprised. Now let's have a look and see how well the switch performed at the same distances, but connected to an IP camera, which requires PoE. I looked at the switch's ability to power the camera, ping latency, bit rate, and any lag. So starting off at 10 meters or 33 feet, the camera powers on when it's plugged into the switch and I was able to ping it from my computer at less than one millisecond. The bit rate is quite high at 2036 kilobytes per second and the video quality is perfect. Now the screen isn't perfect because the computer is hooked up to as an old video card and if we look at the lag, we're looking at average about one second. Results at 50 meters or 164 feet were quite similar. Same for 100 meters or 328 feet. Now beyond this guaranteed stability length at 150 meters or 492 feet and at 175 meters or 574 feet, I was able to see footage on my PC with little to no lag. Very impressive. Once I hit 200 meters or 656 feet and beyond, there was no data activity. I tried a couple of other lower megapixel cameras, but same story. The cameras powered on all the way up to a thousand feet, but there was no data link visible. So in conclusion, here's what I liked about the PoE switch. The price point of $45 is great for a small switch if you need to add a PoE security camera system to your home or business. There's no clunky power brick, and there's no humming of fans, and the unit doesn't run too hot either. I like that the LED lights on the front let you know exactly what's going on, like if you have power flowing to a device but no activity on your network. I also like having the option of fiber optics, but I probably wouldn't use that here at home. I also like the ability to turn on and off the VLAN, 
Again, I probably wouldn't use that at home either unless I had a guest network on an access point. Lastly, I'm very impressed with the performance of the Switch. With the Cat5 cable, I used in all of my testing by achieving some good data flows at long cable lengths. I've actually been using this switch now for a couple of months. You may have seen it in some other of my videos. It's been in my shed, in my garage, and even in my car. It's my go-to switch now for when I'm testing my gear. And I tossed it around quite a bit. There's a few scratches on it and I've had zero issues. So I hope you find this information helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up and product links are in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.